forces are the champions of Islam. And these people are going to conquer India. I know where they got that from. Belong, belongs to Disneyland. Because the Pakistan armed forces have consistently been a friend of Israel. Consistently been a friend of Israel. And tomorrow when this lecture is on YouTube, the Pakistani people are going to be listening to it. They attack Libya to assassinate the Libyan president. It's called state-sponsored terrorism. They say they have the green light from the UN Security Council. Russia says no. The rest of the world says no. If you have any any kind of integrity, you should always draw from the UN now. I think it is easier for Russia to withdraw from the UN than these puppets who rule over the Muslims today. Hmm? So, they made a mess of it. They killed Gaddafi's son, an innocent man. And they killed his children, innocent children. They have blood on their hands. They are murderers. And yet the Pakistan armed forces will still support them. Oh yeah. So now they need something to cover their shame. They need something to divert public attention from the colossal shame of what they did in Libya. So conveniently, Osama bin Laden said, well you can kill me now. How very convenient, eh? So the, the attention of the world will be diverted from what happened in India. In order for Israel to wage the big wars, they have to take out Pakistan nuclear weapons and nuclear weapons. And they're just waiting for civil war to erupt in Pakistan. As soon as they get that excuse, they're going to move in. And when they destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons, the road will be clear for Israel to wage a big war. As soon as those wars begin, you can say goodbye to Singapore. Oh yeah. They will have to break up Pakistan into bits and pieces to ensure that Pakistan never rises again as a nuclear power. So part of Pakistan going to India, another part going to the greater Afghanistan, another part becoming the independent state of Baluchistan, and the rock that remains under Indian hegemony. They don't like the government in Iran. They don't. Yes, it is a Shia government. You don't have to tell me that. I know it. But they don't like that government in Iran. And they want to do to Iran what they did to Afghanistan. So they can put a Karzai in charge of Iran. And that would be a truly, truly Shia government that they can then use and exploit for their own purposes against the Sunni world. They can't do it with this government because this government is sincere in its denunciation of Israel and its wickedness. This government in Iran is sincere in its support of the cause of the oppressed Palestinian people. To believe otherwise is sinful. So they will have to attack Iran and bring down this government as they did with Afghanistan and replace it with another government like Afghanistan, a Karzai government. And then we will see 
the fulfillment of the hadith. The Dajjal will be followed by 70,000 Jews from Isfahan wearing the Persian shawls. Hmm? Once Pakistan's nuclear threat is removed, which should not be long from now, we can then expect the big wars to take place. Israel flexing her muscles. And uh, as a consequence of this, both those big wars against the Arabs in particular, we see the fulfillment of that vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam and this vision of Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. And the territory of Israel expands. When you see the territory of Israel expanding, who is doing it? It is God and Magad. This is a book I wrote, an Islamic view of God and Magad of the modern world. It shows the Sea of Galilee, but the shore is an Egyptian girl who designed this for me. The shore is cracked up, indicating that the Sea of Galilee is drying up. This is the time when we're going to find as the Sea of Galilee is drying up, the big wars will take place and Israel will expand its territory and Israel will take over from the United States as a new ruling state in the world. When Israel wages those big wars against the Arabs, you're going to hear CNN and all the television stations, radio stations, clamoring that Islam is rising up. Islamic governments now are coming to power. Islam is rising up. And this is going to menace the world. Mankind is in great danger from these Muslims who slaughter everybody. The Muslims want to rule the world. That's a lie. You are the one who wants to rule the world, not us. <laughs> and so you're going to have this propaganda offensive. It's coming soon that Israel has to save the world from the menace of Islam. This is the reality of the Arab uprisings. The appearance was something positive, yes. But the reality is that it is beneficial for Israel to eventually fulfill its long planned mission of ruling the world. And when Israel rules the world, you know what will happen after that. I want to leave time now for question and answers, but before I do that, let me end as I began. The only reason that I was able to sit here and give this lecture tonight and explain to you the reality is because I have studied Islamic eschatology, the ilm of Akhiru Zaman. And if you do not do it, you will be a people who will not be able to understand what is happening in the world. Let me end by saying that the Quran has a magnificent role still to play in history. The Quran has a role to play that will dazzle the world. But for the Quran to play, to play that role, Allah has to choose from among our young men. Those will become the scholars of tomorrow when we are in the grave. Maybe one from Kota Damansa. But you're not going to reap, my son, 
unless you can. You have to study the Quran. The books that I have written, this is Jerusalem in the Quran, this is the Islamic view of God and the God in the modern world, the most important surah of the Quran to teach you Akhiru Zaman is Surah al -Kathir. It is. And this book is entitled Surah al and the Modern Age. And so I urge you to read and to study the lectures I have delivered and that may Allah bless you to climb higher that Allah has allowed me to achieve. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ta'inta samir alina tawarina ya mulana inna ta'inta tawarrahu bi rahmatika ya akhma rahmi. Amin. The question is what is the role of China in the events which are now unfolding? Hmm? Uh, we said that Israel wants to rule the whole world. But the world is comprised of many people other than Husni Mubarak who will bend down faster than anybody else to Israel. And General Parvez Musharraf, who go on and even kiss Israel's shoes. There are those who will refuse to bow and bend. And most important of all is Russia. Russia will not bend to Israel. But the NATO alliance must force Russia to bend. And Russia will not bend. So you don't need a PhD in international relations to know that there is a major conflict coming. It is simple. And in that major conflict you're going to have thousands of nuclear weapons being used. But it is not only Russia that will not bend. China is proud of her civilization. And China has every reason to be proud of her civilization. The Chinese in Singapore will bend down and kiss Israel's foot. But not China. No. China will not bend and bow. And China is a nuclear power. And so we can easily anticipate the Chinese-Russian alliance being restored and that Iran and Turkey will be part of that alliance because the Prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam that you will make an alliance with Rome. Rome is not Rome. The capital of Italy? Nonsense. Rome in the Quran is the Byzantine Empire. Rome. And the Byzantine Empire, which had its capital in Constantinople, has now been taken over by Russia. Eastern Orthodox Christianity. So the Prophet said, Alayhi salatu wasalam, that you will make an alliance with Rome. But probably this hadith never reached Pakistan. Because they made the alliance with Washington. <laughs> When I speak like this, of course, the price I pay is that I cannot visit Pakistan anymore. I don't mind paying that price. I don't mind. And so we have a nuclear war coming up between the NATO alliance on one side and Russia and China on the other side. Hmm? They will mutually destroy each other. This book 
explain